It's that time of year again. That time of skeletons, jack-o'-lanterns, and everything spooky. And if you're like me, you like to take things to another level. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride this year, starting with a simple repaint. I stopped by the Home Depot and picked up a plastic, four foot tall angel gravestone. I like it sculpted. In fact, when I'm at any of the stores, the seasonal pop-up stores or the, the big box stores like Home Depot or Lowe's, all that matters is a good sculpture because they can easily be repainted and cheaply. The nose is busted on this one, but that's okay. It, it just adds a little bit of character. $40 for the grave plus 20 ish for the paint, and this will be about a $60 decoration. Let's start by yanking the labels off, and this sometimes can be a mess. Just make sure and take your time with it. I gave it a nice clean rinse and wipe down, and now we can start painting. I'm gonna start with a textured Rust-Oleum. This will give a stone texture to the grave. This stuff, this stuff I think is made for metal surfaces, but I found that it works for pretty much any clean surface. I'm going to give a coat to the entire surface, but keep it in light. This stuff's $10 a can, so I only want to use one can. Also, keeping the coat light preserves some of the dark areas in those recessed areas, uh, which is going to give us a good base to work from. I'm not sure about the nose. We might need to fix it later, but I think the texture looks good. I really hope it's showing through YouTube to you guys. Now let's make it all gray. I'm gonna use this Bear Iron Mountain Satin. I've never used Bear Spray before, but I like their house paint, so I thought I'd give it a try. Again, this stuff ain't cheap, so I'm gonna to try to get full coverage out of one can. And with a rag, I like to wipe back some of the high points to expose the stone color. About 10 minutes in and I think we're starting to get somewhere. Starting to look a lot less plastic and a lot more like stone. A while back, I made a big thing of black wash. It's some black and brown acrylics, a little dish soap, uh, and water to thin it down. We'll use this to give the whole thing a wash, really focusing on the recessed areas. I want to go heavy with it. I want to build it up and let it run. Don't be timid with washes. They end up drying lighter than they apply, and you can always wipe back if you need to. First wash application, and you can see we're already getting more definition, more depth, and the runs start adding some age. I wanted to stop here and mention now that I'm trying to keep everything around the angel's face, kind of midsection, the hands and the heart area, I'm trying to keep it lighter, uh, just to kind of give an implied glow or an implied angelic glow, just, just something to watch as we move forward. Now my favorite part starts. I pulled out the airbrush and thinned down some black acrylic paint. All my focus is on the depth, definition, and age. Always remember, Google is your friend, so use it. Look up some pictures, in this case, of old gravestones. Uh, and, and in my opinion, don't use other people's work Use the real thing, use real world objects as reference when you're doing this painting. Here's what I've got, it's subtle, it's aged, I'm liking it. The rains have come and it is 
pouring outside. So I've moved indoors. We're done spraying everything, so it won't be a problem. Here's a little better look at where we are so far. I'm still not sure about the nose. I want to work in just a little bit of highlights, work in just a little bit of worn areas, not too much. It's always easy to go overboard with things, especially when you're working highlights. And keep that in mind, because when you do, it starts to look a little mass produced. So keep it subtle and just work in layers. The highlights are subtle and a little bit hard to see, but if we zoom in, you can see them clearly, including below her eyes where maybe she's been crying just a little bit. Again, I'm trying to keep it light around her face and the core of her body, trying to keep it a bit angelic. Now keep in mind, we'll also be able to achieve this effect via lighting, but I wanted to start it with the painting. So when it comes time to set this up, um, we have a little more liberty with the lighting and what we can do. I want to add a little more age to the stone where the sun's been beating down on it, or at least make it look like the sun's been beating down on it. And I can do that with a little moss. I've got some green acrylic paint uh, and some powdered moss that I've mixed together. Uh, and I'm going to use a very dry brush to apply it. Slowly build the color and then add a little of that dry moss on top. It really gives a good effect. So I think we've now got a gravestone that looks much more like stone and no longer like a plastic decoration box from a big box store. Uh, and we can do a lot more with it when we do setup. So like I was saying, we can add lighting. We'll be adding more foliage. Obviously, we'll be adding more scenery, more uh, props around it. So all that will give a better effect of an old cemetery, but this is just one example. Obviously we can do this many times over with different gravestones that you find from all the different stores. Um, but now we've got a good effect. I think we've got, we're making progress. I thank you guys for joining me. I hope this is something you do. You can do it for about 60 bucks and it took me about a day. I took, actually it took me about a day and a half because I had to do filming, which should take somebody about a day to do. Um, so why don't you give it a try? I hope you do. Let me know how it works out down in the comments. Uh, I've got more videos coming for Halloween prop repaints. So keep your eye out for that. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.